Good evening and welcome to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. Thank you for joining us. Joining us on tonight's program is your United States Congressman, John Peterson. Stay with us. It's all tonight on Feedback. Welcome to Feedback this Tuesday evening. Good evening to you. I'm Mark Despotakis. From the shot, you may be able to tell, uh, maybe not actually, that we're on a new set here. We have moved actually about... Um, we're going to look at the new set and uh, Congressman Pearson, who will be joining us here in a few minutes. But um, this is a look at our, our new set. You'll be seeing, of course, more of it uh, as we continue. Um, kind of a different for us. No TV monitor in the background, but the logo. Uh, is still there, so you'll be seeing that uh, coming up in the next few months, of course. All right, as is the we uh, show you on this is something uh, I picked up off the satellite that uh, came across on Monday afternoon. Uh, it, it came out of our affiliate WAGA in Atlanta. Uh, it's a story by Paul Yates on election uh, one procedure for Take a look at it. President Carter opened the hearing with harsh conditions voting here he found in some developing countries. He urged a close look at procedures in this country and elsewhere. To see what are their best practices, how do they conduct an election that is honest, fair, safe, without error, and also that in Today was Georgia's Secretary of State, Kathy Cox, who said Georgia's election problems rivaled Florida's last fall. She's calling for a uniform electronic voting system. We believe that electronic equipment systems that are flexible, accurate, and that prevent overvoting democracy has to be in Atlanta, the hearings will move to okay. presidential libraries in California, Texas, and Michigan. So there you go. Um, that's what's, what, they're, what they're saying about voting reform uh, in Georgia right now. It's certainly something that's hitting the country. As you heard there, they're going to be taking it kind of on the road to some of the presidential libraries. Uh, thing. What's going to happen? Maybe we'll ask uh, Representative Peterson to comment on that. That is what is coming up next here on Feedback. Stay with us after the break. Your United States Congressman, John Peterson, joins us. Stay with us. Wayne County and surrounding communities since 1950. She's going to go in if she wants to go out with this loner. The young man wants to know if the girl over there is a donor. Somebody wants to know if you're an organ and tissue donor. Yes, hey. Me too. Are you a donor? Make sure your family knows your decision so they can later. And I said, you know, it wouldn't a better name for a movie to come out now, and I think I'm going to make the movie or write the book. It would be a great book to have, and you can uh, call uh, to get her book. Um, you can also find it online. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be ready to make it. So not scheduling. Um, Jesus, why is this that students have such a problem here with? Tune into feedback. Tuesday and beginning. We're really out of time. No time to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant. The Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant is located at 540 Main Street in Clarion and offers dining as well as a nightclub. The restaurant and nightclub are open seven days a week for your convenience. Call Loomis Restaurant 226-8400.
Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. As I said, joining us on today's program is uh, your United States Representative Congressman John Peterson. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Mark. And we Good to be talking. I don't know. Yours is the largest district? East of the Mississippi. Wow. Largest geographical. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I have my own mini West, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> mini West. Uh, okay, let's talk a little about what we were talking about. Uh, we were showing here in the, in the first segment, voting reform. Election 2000 was certainly the most interesting, and I, that was my first presidential election that I got to vote in, so I'm very proud to say that. Uh, do we need some type of voting form, reform from a uniform system? Well, I don't think we want the federal government to federalize it, but I think the federal government will probably furnish some money. There's a lot of bills been introduced, and I would be not, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if this budget doesn't have some money in it to help states. States mm -hmm. do need to invest in their voting processes, mm -hmm. because uh, we, we need to get in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, as one of them was saying, you know, the, you, there are states that are voting with computer screens you just touch and, and, and then and it comes back and are you sure you, that's how you wanted to vote? And then you say yes and they say, now are you sure? Here's how you vote. <laughs> and it's a you know, pretty fail-proof system and uh, for two or three times you have to keep making sure you made the right vote and then they, and then they calculate your vote and it goes right mm -hmm. in. And, you know, there, the other problem that we're not talking about much today, but urban, in my view, this is my personal opinion and I've been involved in some Philadelphia elections, the urban cities have a lot of fraud. They mm -hmm. still vote dead people. They vote people that have moved away. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the problems with motor voter in this country is if you have a driver's license, you can vote. That doesn't mean that you're a citizen of this country. And, and those are those are additional really? things that, in, in my view, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of uh, false voting in the cities. Mm -hmm. Not so much in rural. In rural areas, I don't think it's right. a big problem. But but in rural areas, we've certainly had punch cards, like we're a problem in Florida. We have old paper ballots in part of my district yet, where mm -hmm. you put an this X in the box. still and, using the, yeah, the paper, paper ballots. ballots. Uh, and, and it's time to move on, but it is expensive. The old, the machines were very expensive, the big mechanical machines, uh, and they're kind of dinosaurs. I don't, they have to have somebody make parts for them now. The company's not in business. Uh, but we need to, we need to invest. It, it seems to me with computer technology today, you know, it's gotten so less expensive year after year mm -hmm. that there ought to be systems soon that, that, that can provide very accurate counts and, and make it very simple. Would you advocate maybe uh, a statewide standard system as opposed to each county choosing their way? Not, not a federal standard, maybe a, a state standard. I think standard. states should, should uh, at least limit options mm. to what they feel are appropriate and, and make sure that some of these uh, old systems are gone in that investment. I think you're going to see states putting money up too. I think mm -hmm. you're, this is, there's going to be an investment to bring the voting process into the 21st century, yeah. and it'll be an appropriate one. And it took that election night that lasted, I think, 36 days to... Uh, <laughs> it seemed forever. <laughs> it did seem forever. For those of us covering it, even at a local level, it, it, was, it was forever. Okay, we're going to move on from that. Um, you know, something that your name has been so associated with recently is uh, the Edmund Pope um, ordeal, maybe would be the word. Um, uh, well, let me just describe it here. Pope... Um, was in Russia accused of espionage by the Russian government. He was later pardoned by President uh, Vladimir Putin um, because he, w they, U.S. officials said his life was in danger because he suffered from a rare form of cancer. Uh, now you were one of his strongest advocates to get it, get him out of there. And there was a quote in a New York Times article some time ago when he said that you were one of the two heroes in winning his release. How do you feel about being called the hero? Well, it's uh, I feel humbled. Uh, uh, his wife Sherry and his business partner Keith came to me in April, in mid-April or late April, and, and told how they were getting no help, they had no hope, and, and they were unable to communicate with him. They didn't know that he even knew that they knew he was okay and was alive. And so we got started in the process, and we spent uh, a tremendous amount of time. My staff went with her to Russia in June. I went in August, October, and December, and, and spent a lot of time there, and did something I never thought of doing as I was growing up. I went to Russia and raised hell with the <laughs> FSB, their unfair charges, he was not a spy, and their unfair judicial system was not giving him a fair trial. Uh, I mean, nobody in this country would go through what he did. And he was, he was in La Fortova prison for 254 days, and in, in about October, he was a very sick man, uh, partially st almost starved to death because of, uh, of the terrible diet he was given until we started to be able to take food into him. His wife finally figured out how to get food into him because you were allowed to take 32 pounds in every so many days, and she had people doing that regularly. She went over there four times, was only, was only allowed to see him an hour each time. They were tough. Wow. I was also in the courtroom when he was sentenced. Uh, in, in June, we thought we had him negotiated out through indirect sources outside of the State Department. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Putin made that proposal to the FSB, which is the most powerful agency over there. It's the replacement of the old KGB. And they were very upset, so he said he'd have to wait till 
until the trial went forward, so he couldn't interfere. But the trial went on for two months. You know, it, it didn't start until October, and it was clear into December. And, and we were very concerned about Ed's bone cancer. Fortunately, he's, he's okay. His mm -hmm. bone cancer has not come back. He's at high risk, though, for two years, the doctors say, because of the tremendous stress factor. He had some skin cancer removed when he got back, and he has some other health problems, but they're, they're manageable health problems. He's 54 years old, and so he, he had always been a person that was in very fit shape, but uh, uh, it, it was the challenge of a lifetime. I mm -hmm. never expected to be over in Russia holding just multiple news conferences, doing live talk radio, live TV, uh, being grilled by the Russian press. Uh, it, it was a challenge. It was interesting as I look back. Uh, it was a great learning experience and something that uh, I'll never forget. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, I guess it kind of puts things in perspective for us, you know, when we think our day is rough. Well, I complain about our judicial system. It's, you know, I think ours is not perfect. Uh, but I want to tell you, it's wonderful compared to the Russian judicial mm -hmm. system. Uh, he was, you know, he, by rights he should have had a jury trial. They, they never allowed them in the Moscow area. He was not allowed to have, um, the, he was not allowed to take the charges out of the courtroom. So they were never even allowed to go to the lawyer's office. Uh, really? And that's really. He was not allowed to cross-examine the witnesses. Uh, he was not allowed to have an American witness. He was not allowed to have an independent interpreter. And the FSB interpreter was uh, was terrible. I, I heard him the day when he was sentenced, and it was it took an hour and 22 minutes to read the sentence. And and he would he would give him about two or three sentences of English, and then say et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He was a terrible interpreter. He was oh just. Oh my gosh. The, the, the charges made no sense to Ed when he translated them to English, and so the whole thing was, a, you know, was just a, was a, he was framed. Uh, why we're not quite sure yet. I'm I'm very thankful though that we completed before this spy mm -hmm. issue came up in Hanson, where we're throw, we threw sure. out 50 of theirs, and they're going to throw out 50 of ours, and because it would be very difficult to get out of prison right now. They they'd probably be wanting to trade him for Hanson, who could be devastated. Hanson mm -hmm. was a very high level person in our uh, anti. Uh, spy system and uh, to have someone in that position that know how we try to protect our interests here mm -hmm. be working for them for 15 years and, and then allow him to go there right. and tell them everything he knows uh, firsthand uh, would have been devastating and so we're just very pleased that Ed's home back with his family recovering uh, in state oh, college right? in state college yes yeah. and uh, I had dinner with him two weeks ago oh, yeah. yes and in fact his, his Russian attorney was over uh, Pavel Ostahov and his wife mm. had a wonderful dinner with them and a visit wonderful. and uh, so it, it was uh, we, we, we made some real friendships. We were over there enough that we made some real friendships in Russia, and it's a country all, uh, every news article I see now in Russia, I read them, because uh, <laughs> I've developed a keen interest in Russian sure. affairs. Uh, when they first came to you about this, what, you, you didn't know if he was really a spy or not, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, but, uh, and you I went didn't, with it anyway. Yes, I didn't think he was. But, but I said this later, as, as we, we got more and more information, and people came to me from all over this country. People that are really arms dealers uh, that, that worked the whole world, had came to my office and wanted to try to be helpful. There was a lot of people who wanted to be helpful. A lot of mm -hmm. retired military people wanted to be helpful because Ed had a 26-year uh, career in the Navy as an intelligence officer and was very highly regarded. Uh, and, and so there were a lot of people trying to help Ed, you know. And so I was quite sure he was not a spy, but I said to a number of individuals who questioned me, what if he's a spy and you're going to be embarrassed? I said, I won't be embarrassed because if he is a spy, he's our spy. And if it's your brother, and the, and the CIA had hired him to go there and spy, would you want us to desert him? No. And the person said, well, no. And I said, well, we shouldn't desert him. Mm -hmm. I said, he, I personally still believe, and he gets incensed if you accuse him of being a spy. He is incensed. Really? Oh, yeah. He gets very upset, uh, very emotional about it. He just, he wants to clear his name so badly mm -hmm. because he was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years of hard labor. And he was devastated that day. He was in this huge metal cage, like inch steel bars in the courtroom, about a third of the size of the courtroom, and I had arranged it so he could stand and uh, hold his wife's hands and they could kind of embrace through the bars during this hour and 22 minute ordeal. And the moment they finished sentencing him and the final words were 20 years of hard labor in a northern prison camp, I mean, he was devastated because he did not expect to get that. And they ripped him right out of his wife's arms, took him right back to the prison, and she, she was not allowed to see him again. Wow. Yeah. Just amazing, yes. and maybe it is lucky what we have here in this country. Uh, we, we, we're a very blessed country. We are going to take a break. Uh, we're going to talk more with your congressman, John Peterson, coming up after the break. This portion of the programming was...
Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by The Carpet Barn. The Carpet Barn is located at 470 South 5th Avenue in Clarion. The Carpet Barn is open Monday through Saturday for all your carpet needs. So call The Carpet Barn, 226-7332. Wardrobe for some TV5 news anchors provided by Fashion Bugs, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all, with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 5. On the big highway of life, only one safe place for kids. Seat, the front seat's not the best to drop out. Seat, Don't want that big old bag to pop out. Back seat, baby. Put that booties in the back seat. Back seat, baby. Have that condition never be out. Here to remind you to put them behind you. Back seat, back seat, baby. To stay alive even when I drive. Thanks. Wow. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Desvidakis. Thank you for joining us this Tuesday evening. Uh, continuing our conversation now with uh, Congressman Peterson. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, Pleasure. Moving on here from, let's, let's talk about some things maybe going on now. Um, president Bush survived election night 2000 and is now the president. Um, and he's come out with this, this idea of faith-based initiatives. Now, as I understand, you support it. Oh, sure. Uh, ex maybe explain the program. People, you know, some people get the connotation, well, he's giving money to the churches. You know, I explain the program. Well, uh, in some areas like drug and alcohol rehab, uh, homelessness, uh, the faith-based groups, whether Catholic, whether Protestant, whether Jewish, whether, have always been the most successful. Yet we've, we've, we've not allowed our, our government to partner with them to expand their services and to treat more people. We're not, we're not about drawing people to any religion uh, and, and, and promoting the religion. It is a religious base that, that help people. Mm -hmm. Impoverished kids, a lot of the most successful programs in the cities are run by churches. Uh, why not partner? Daycare centers. Uh, why not partner with these, allow these people the same ability to work with federal funds to expand their services as a non-sectarian agency. And right. that's, that's just kind of taken the bias away. It's not, it's not about promoting anybody's religion. But historically, they're by far the most successful at helping poor people and poverty people. And it's like taking a glue we have and using it and, and allowing them. Because you know, most people that are down on their luck need a family. Oftentimes the church kind of becomes the family, the support group they have life. Uh, and, and so I think it's an ingenious idea myself. Does this cross the line of church and state? Oh, no. No? No, no. You knew that was Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't even come close. You know, no? we're not promoting any religion. The government's not endorsing the Catholic religion or the Jewish religion or the, or the any, any one Protestant religion or anybody. We're just saying that those who are running successful programs and, and, and want to run successful programs, they don't have same access to federal funds for that purpose that any other group currently has. Just kind of taking the bias away, but it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with promoting that religion. The money will, will not be about getting people to agree to attend that church or go to that church. For it's any, just help they Helping out. those people. The Salvation Army's been doing it forever. Right. I mean, look, just think of the work the Salvation Army does. Right. And, and why should we be biased against the Salvation Army? Their whole goal is to help people. Right, all right, we have about three minutes left, so I'm gonna move on from that. Uh, the budget. You know, the, the House has passed it, but now it's in the Senate. No, we're, we're passing it. We're pa okay, it's passing, but it's going to pass. That's correct. That's right. uh, Senate actually talking campaign finance reform, we're hearing a lot. But um, it, I guess it's going to be harder to pass. Of course, you know, it's closer in the Senate. It's going to be harder for it to pass. But um, is this, is this b budget, is this tax cut that the president is proposing, is this too big, is this too small, or is it 
just right as uh, <laughs> being said. Well, there are those. Uh, we have some very, you know, uh, a member just to the east of us here has, uh, is a part of a group that, that think it's not enough. Uh, there are those who think it needs to be more front-loaded to help the economy. I might agree with that, mm -hmm. that we need, to, we need to make sure that in, in, in the next six months, uh, if, if we lowered the rates and made it retroactive, then you'd have less taken out of your paycheck immediately, and so that's going to give more spending. The issue that not people have watched about is the energy issue in this country, the cost of energy doubling and tripling it, it, in, right. in all the ways we use energy and the cost to business has had a huge impact on our economy. Uh, and, and, and if we don't do something, I think a tax cut is just one of a number of things. I think we need interest rates cut further. Uh, we, we need to stimulate, and we need to get a handle on our energy costs because those are coming right out of the bottom line. How does this, this whole debacle, the, the, maybe we were seeing with the stock market so recently, how does that fit into this? Uh, is it a good time then to do a tax cut plan even with all of the... Oh yeah, the value of a, you know, that's paper. Mm -hmm. And you know, our, our 401ks are smaller than they were, our, our aren't as worth as much as they were, but they'll come back. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's a paper loss, it's not a real loss. Uh, I think we have an over panic at the market now where we had an over enthusiastic market mm -hmm. out there before where people right. had run stocks up to two and three times what they should have ever been worth. That's all sorted out. Now is the time for people to get in and, and buy back our person and to liquidate some property so I can put some money in the market because I mm -hmm. think it's a perfect time to buy in. It's low. And, and, and that'll, that money will drive it back. There's a lot of people pulled money out of the market. They'll put it back and the market will come back and, and it'll come back appropriately. I think there's an over concern now and people pulling away from it like it was an over you know starting up a year at a time that would ever go down again. A lot of younger people for the first time have seen a market go down mm -hmm. and, and they don't like it because they've seen but for three or four years it always went up. I mean it's it, gonna happen. I think we're very close to bottom. I think it you know there mm -hmm. might be a few stocks still go down but I think most of that sort out's done and I think you're gonna see it start to climb. Well yeah a lot of people are certainly uh about that out there. Back to briefly the last minute left here. Um, Retroactive. How are we going to do that? How do you make something retroactive? How well, do you find every taxpayer in the country? Well, you do. You, you're, we have already passed the, the, the overall broad-based tax mm -hmm. cut. We're going to do marriage penalty now, and, and that'll, that'll. Well, then your, your, your employers will get bills, and where you've already paid too much tax, you may not pay any taxes for a few months. That'll put money right in your pocket. See, if you've been overpaying for the first four months because it's retroactive, mm -hmm. then the new charts will come out to the employers, and, and so you'll pay less and or maybe no tax to catch the trust is going to do. But I mean, are they going to, is it all going to be done correctly? Or you're well, it all sorts out, at the, end, it all sorts out at the end of the year. It all sorts out at the Hopefully. end of the year. But yes, I, w I think there'll be an effort to get employers up to speed quickly. So much of it's on computers today. It's not, right. it's not all paper. It's a matter of punching in and uh, do payrolls, and, and so they just crank out a check, and you'll have overpaid for this. Thanks. Well, thank you for joining us. That's certainly been interesting. A lot more topics we could have talked oh, yeah. about. We'll have Let's to have next time uh, you were in town. And you okay. I'm Brandy. How would you like to give hope to millions of those children? UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, saving 140 countries. By providing kids with medicine, clean water, and education. UNICEF can make a huge difference in our world. For more information, call 1 800 F O R KIDS. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, we want to thank uh, Congressman Dixon for joining us. Kind of had to run away from us. Um, as you know, we tape these shows on Monday night, so he was in town all day Monday going over to the uh, Interesting stuff uh, talking with him. Uh, the Edmund Pope story is certainly interesting, just in some of the stuff we were able to talk about off air. Um, certainly fascinating, so we want to thank him for coming. It's great when he's in town that we can get him on here. As you may remember, the last time we had him on here was uh, via satellite DC when we had him on. Um, going on tomorrow's show, uh, Clarion County Dairy Princess Holly Dieter will be joining us. Now, you, you may have heard of that, you may not have heard of that. We're going to explain uh, what she does, what her role is, um, coming up tomorrow on the Wednesday program. Stay tuned, TV5 News coming up next with Amanda Miller. It's an honor to be also in the I have a story on that coming up next on TV5 News. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night.